Hello, my name is Bart Brecka. Today, my plan is to share a video share, showing Creo sheet metal. For the more experienced high-end users, you might still find this video interesting because I'm going to share some of the um, really cool parts of Creo, and I'm also going to share a design engine typical uh, underlying curve geometry and how one can make a complex sketch more, more simplistic by stacking features. Before I start, however, I just wanted to show off the design engine job board where there's a number of jobs related to Pro Engineer each day, sometimes 10 or 15 different jobs per day. Not all Pro Engineer related. Now I'm going to click through the, the Design Engine School website. And so I'll click through and just show the sheet metal classes that we have to offer. There's two sheet metal classes at Design Engine. One's geared to beginners, the other is geared to more experienced sheet metal users and who might want to set up their shop to understand you know, how to set up their shop with respect to Pro Engineer sheet metal design K factors. I'll click through the sheet metal training level one just to show you some of the exercises that are available and then I'll click through the training material itself. There's probably 15 or 17 so different exercises for sheet metal at Design Engine. These are just four here. We talk about how to design two sheet metal parts together. In that case. Now I'm going to go ahead and share with you the training material. I've already plugged in the login and password so it doesn't prompt me for that. I'll scroll down to the Pro Engineer portion of the training which is in this gray area and I'll go into the sheet metal training. Now I'm going to go kind of scroll through this a little bit slowly so you can see some of the training material. This is the first exercise that we go through and the PDF is located just underneath. The instructor kind of does it for you and then has you go through it. Scroll down a little further. This is the exercise we're going to do today. I've already got it up in memory, so I'm going to go ahead and jump straight and show you how to do it. Now, the really cool part about Creo, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my layers so you can see the underlying curve geometry. Sort of signature design engine move here. Two curves stacked up. The first one's just a rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that rectangle and drag that geometry around so you can see how it, how it updates. And if I just left click out into the space here, double click out here into the space, it's like hitting control G or regenerate in Wildfire 5. Let's go ahead and move the, the width so you can see how that works. Du double click out here into the white space. The, the second curve in my feature mix actually has the radiuses set to it. And it's, it's just basically a sketch and you'll see because I'll, I'll make it uh, from scratch here in a moment with the uh, radiuses all equal to each other. Now, the really cool part is all this all this geometry flexes with even the flat pattern on. So I can see what the flat's gonna look like and update that in real time. That, that should be really handy for those who are trying to optimize the five by 10 sheet of sheet metal. This geometry here I can flex as well. As I sh I'm gonna go ahead and stretch that geometry without the flat pattern on so you can get an idea of how that's built. I'm going to drag it around a little bit. The red dimensions are locked. I'm going to hit control G this time. Okay, now I want to go ahead and build this from scratch and I'm going to do so without first starting the sheet metal modular. I'll go ahead and close out of here and file new. I'll call it sheet part 01. I'll go ahead and turn on my datum planes and I'll my first feature is going to be a rectangular square. Okay, I'll just not even bother locking planar to the sketch. I'm just going to stay in, in, in 3D. I'll set this to be say 6, uh, six by 3 or 4 just to get a nice rectangle there. Check out of that. Now, my next feature is going to be a culmination of those two features. I'm going to simply use edge um, 
project is now the term. If I hover over it, you can see it's called project. Somebody decided to change the name of that. Another click. Now, in Trio, I've automatically got set up the shade sketch inside, which was new in Wildfire 4. I'm going to go ahead now and do a fillet radius on each one of these corners. Some of the more experienced users are probably wondering why I'm stacking up pieces like this, and this is a simple example. But uh, when you're trying to get more complex geometry sketched, it really helps to stack up the features. Now I've got all four radiuses set to the same. I'm going to go ahead and check out of that. And without left clicking anywhere, I'm just going to go straight to the extrude button because it was already highlighted and ready to go. Okay, now I'm ready to convert this entity to the sheet metal module. Now, if you're just kind of getting acquainted to, you know, Trio, you'd probably look around for the convert to sheet metal function. You could probably get in here and search for it. My first indication, in, you know, inclination is to go through applications and switch to sheet metal. However, the geometry function that we're looking for is convert to sheet metal down under, under model operations. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to go ahead and shell each side. Another click to terminate my function. Okay, just to exercise the geometry and show you that it works properly, I'm going to go ahead and double click on my box and stretch it, and you get the real time updates. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch, another underlying curve geometry. This time it's not going to have the, the radiuses in it. I'll just go ahead and sketch a line across here and then get the sort of puzzle shape in there. Go ahead and my middle click to get my dimensions to show up, and I'm going to go ahead and use the alignment function to align to the ends. Now I'm going to discover, a share with you a couple different. I, you know, I wish Pro Engineer would remember how I dimension my entities. I'm sure that's coming at some point. My speculation is that it, it should remember how I dimension geometry. Now I've set this geometry to look, look at itself at the other side, so if I stretch this one, it should go with. However, I want to control this distance using a dimension, and I'm going to set that to 1. Okay. So my workflow to do that is to left click, left click, middle click where I want. Okay. I might middle click and double click to change it to 1. And now I'm going to left click on both of those values, right hold down, and hit lock. Sorry, it doesn't have this functionality. I've been looking for it, but people are like, why would you want to do that? They just haven't discovered the workflow I'm getting ready to share with you. So now when I drag this geometry up and down, look, these numbers stay locked, and these do independent. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check out of this now, and now I need to actually create a sketch rip. So I'm going to uh, just show you where that sketch rip functionality is. It won't let you flatten it out until we do this. So I'm going to come in now and use this project tangency option, except I want the loop option. I just want to get everything that's in that sketch for one feature. So I'm going to go ahead now and create a uh, fillet radius between here and here. I'm just going to check the time to make those all equal. Okay, now I'm ready to create a flat pattern. Okay. So I'll uh, hit Control Z and show you how that's a little bit different. If I just hit flat pattern, it doesn't now in Trio, ask me what do I want to remain flat. But if I pick something, it'll it'll start with that geometry. I'm going to hit Control Z to, sh to show un uh, Control Z to undo what I just did. Okay, so that's that's my that's my um, video to share with you a sort of new workflow to do sheet metal components and parts. Please consider coming to Design Engine in the future and. 
uh, please refer Design Engine for training to those who may not have heard about it. Thank you again.